King of Pop, Michael Jackson, who collapsed during rehearsals for a concert last week, has been released from the hospital. Doctors say his condition is stable and continues to improve, although he is still a freak. <laughs> I also noticed that uh, desserts are different uh, nowadays. When I was young, the waiter would come and he'd go, what do you want for dessert? Cherry pie or apple pie? And you'd go, I will have a cherry pie. And a guy would bring, it was very simple, you know? Things were very simple back then. Now, desserts, oh my lord. The guy shows up and he's got a big tray, a canted angle, and every confection known to man is on it. He's, and I don't like the way he talks, like, because he doesn't talk like the pork chop talk anymore. All of a sudden, for the dessert, he's like, all oh, sexual undertones, you know. Who <laughs> what? I mean, he's all like, ah. Why are you saying ah like that? He's like, ah. <laughs> May I tempt you or something? <laughs> tempt me. <laughs> <laughs> you like decadent things? Well, I don't. <laughs> I hope you left some room in your belly. Okay, listen. <laughs> Are we still talking about desserts here? What the? F <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> I don't want to end up blowing you in the bathroom or something. <laughs> guy gave me a keychain, a plastic keychain. Well, that guy is a moron. <laughs> How do I get the supermodel back? <laughs> hey, look, $1.99 at the airport. Is it, well, he really gave you a keychain? He key gave chain? me a plastic. I was going to bring it out, but I couldn't get it off of my keys, so I left it in the backstage. But he gave me a keychain. Why didn't you bring out the G-string? <laughs> long, 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 long. I know to smoke. I'll smoke it for you. If yep. you no, no, right. no, I'm trying sure. to. I just figured it would be rude not to offer you a light. It's nice, but I'm trying not to, and I feel like I <laughs> <laughs> Sitting there with a cigarette. Oh, I feel if I, you know, took one puff. I have an oral fixation. My doctor tells me, which is not good. <laughs> How did he know that? that I was sucking his cock. <laughs> I do remember that. You know, this guy Milos Forman. Yeah, he's yeah. a big director. So he saw me on Saturday Night Live. So he got the idea I was smart. <laughs> I always you know, thought that. Everybody always thought that. Because I'm reading the news yeah. and shit like that. Says, so come to that. We go out to eat at Nobu and this shit, right? And so I go with them. <laughs> So it's me, him, and two guys from, for, two foreigners. Right. And so these guys know everything, you know? And uh, so they're like, ah, what about uh, the situation in the Balkans or something? Like that? Yeah, you're the newsman. And, uh, and I just kind of play along, like, by repeating what they had said three sentences ago. Right, yeah. And uh, so anyways, he goes, I put you in the movie, man. I need a guy to, and he was going to give me a big part right so i was like no 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 don't do that like i can't <laughs> act and he's like ah oh, don't worry about it i go seriously milos i don't want you to give me a big part so he's like, ah, give me, what do you want i go just you know, give me a small part that'd be cool so he made me a reporter right in this in this uh, people versus larry flint right okay. yes. yeah I played one of the people. Right. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Originally, you, I think it sounds like you were about to be Larry, Larry Flint. Flint. Right. Oh, my God. Bam, uh, Larry Flint. So we uh, go to, uh, we do the movie, right? And uh, uh, and I'm a reporter, you know? So he goes, uh, you know, you drive up and get out of the car and run in. I go, well, I can't drive. He goes, oh. <laughs> so he goes, Oops. okay, a cab will drive you. So it doesn't make sense. Like right. a reporter's in a cab. <laughs> so we do the scene. It's me and Larry Flint, you know? Uh, me and Woody Harrelson. Yeah. Him. So then... Anyways, oh, wow. uh, Woody Harrelson's really cool, and fucking actors, man, when they're really good, it's like something different, right. you know? Because I'm just, I'm just waiting for the other fucker to stop talking and hope to God I remember You're my lines. You're not even line. paying attention. No, I'm just right. hoping to remember my words. So anyways, uh, fucking what's his name? Uh, Woody Harrelson asked me if I want a beer, you know? Mm -hmm. He goes, uh, you want a beer? I go, no, it's cool. I don't, I don't drink, you know? He goes, you don't want a beer? I go, no, I don't drink, but thanks, man. And then I go, uh, you drink? Like, uh, I thought you just smoked weed and all that shit. And then uh, all of a sudden, Milos Forman goes, cut, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> and we're in the movie. You didn't know. You, no. You he thought he was he's talking, talking to you. Because he was looking at me and talking like a, a regular person. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> Imagine if you woke oh up God. and you realized you were wrong about everything. You just, you just woke up and you go, God damn, I've been wrong about every single thing I've ever believed. <laughs> I 
Then it's time to go down to the rope store, in my opinion, because <laughs> it's not going to get what? better, you know. And... <laughs> what? Come go on. to the rope store. That's my suggestion to you. No, bro. And get a, a hunk of rope about this big. <laughs> and then go to the rickety stool store. <laughs> And listen, it's no coincidence that the rope store and the rickety stool store are always right beside each other, right? I don't want to get political or anything like that, but... When people commit suicide, no one ever understands, you know what I mean? People commit suicide, people go, I don't, I don't understand why, and I go, you don't? <laughs> What, you live in a cotton candy house or something? What the fuck? Is... <laughs> you don't know about life? <laughs> now it only disappoints and gets worse and worse until it ends in a oh, catastrophe? God, <laughs> I hate this call, What the bro, fuck? <laughs> no, I'm so stupid. There's two reasons guys will hang themselves from the neck. <laughs> One is, like we said, to escape this worthless masquerade of a life we pretend we have. <laughs> and the God. second reason we hang ourselves from the neck is to whack off. These guys, <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> it's called autoerotic asphyxiation. It's a big fancy word, but it's a filthy thing. <laughs> And uh, this is my problem with it. The risk reward is <laughs> not good. 21 years old, he was in a McDonald's going, you want lids on these? <laughs> Everybody's different, but I'm sorry. There's worth in that. Now, here, can you pick it up, Adam? Yeah, sure, I'll pick it up for you. Here. No, but while you're down there. Yeah. <laughs> you're writing a book. Yes. How to be a model. Yes. The complete idiot's guide to getting into modeling. So, like, rule number one: be incredibly beautiful. Right. <laughs> I mean, what are the things know, that you can I do? Know rule number two: yeah. don't be a midget. Oh my God! Oh my God! Are you Jewish? Yeah. Okay, then you'll get it. Oh, okay. Okay. Half Jewish. No, I'm full. Full Jewish. Full Jewish. All right, then. But you're young, so you might not get yeah, it. Maybe. Okay, so here's the joke. Holocaust denier. I'm also. <laughs> My father's favorite joke? Yep. Well, he had a joke, uh, uh, roses are gray, violets are gray, tulips are gray, because I am a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's, we first that met, good. I met you underneath the Queensboro Bridge. You at the time were jerking off punks for $15 a man. My whole family's watching, man. My grandmother. Your family doesn't know that when you were a young man, you used to jerk off punks for $15 a man? All joking aside, I know you love to well, joke, Bob Dole, you know, but that guy, he's a war hero, you know? Yeah, yeah. He's, he gave his, his uh, arm for his country. You know, he went through all these debilitating injuries during the war for his country. It was great. And in all fairness, though, Bill Clinton also, he had a... A kind of some war injury. Really? You know? Yeah. When he was in England there during the Vietnam War, I heard he, uh, <laughs> I heard he, uh, he had a bad injury. He burned his mouth on a bomb. Really? <laughs> Do you think this would be funny, just as a practical joke, if you just wrote a suicide note and just blamed some random guy? Do you yeah, think that would why be... Why is the honest joke, though? You know what I mean? You know, like your barber or something like that, you know? You go, you go it's all Ralph Abernathy's fault. <laughs> because you know the police would be compelled to go to Abernathy's barber shop and go, have you ever heard of a fellow named name of Norm MacDonald? I go, yeah, he'd come in every couple of months for a trim. Oh, okay, well anyways, he took his life because of you. <laughs> Wrote it so here in this boring. letter. Would you like to keep the? Gonna keep it. Well, why would you keep it? 
And then Ralph Abernathy would have to spend the rest of his life walking down. <laughs> this week in Minneapolis, the Minnesota Obesity Center officially opened. Its goals? To find ways to identify behaviors that lead to obesity. Also, it's a good place to meet fat chicks. <laughs> oh, duh, because... Against spanking. Either. Yes, even with children, spanking. With children. With, yeah, with, well, unless it's two consenting adults, yeah, I don't really have any... Spanking. What about when they get you and then it hits the back of your balls? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> old Joy Behar is? Well, I don't think she wants you to tell everybody. It's in her Wikipedia. Oh, she's, I think, a lot older than 70. I thought. 70! Yeah. That sounds, she looks great. That sounds about right to me. 70? No, yeah. I never, I didn't think of her as 70. Jesus Christ almighty, when did she break? 50? I like her. I like her too. She reminds me. You know, she reminds me of like your old aunt or something. Yeah, you know, yeah. With her Ooh. funny opinions. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? The view is a bunch of <laughs> fucking. What kind of hen house horse shit is that? I went to a Friars Club once. I never seen a roast or anything like that, Joy. But oh, I seen. Yeah. I went one time. I loved playing poker. I had a bit of a gambling problem for a while, and I couldn't get enough poker games. Right. So this dude, he told me, you "Gotta go to the Friars Club, man. There's a big poker game there." Right. I have to talk to four people. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, so I go to the to the Friars Club. Barbara, are you listening? Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh my God. Yeah, you listen to your story. Yeah. So, so I'm at the Friars Club, and I, I, they tell me there's this great, there's this big poker game, right? So I go there, and there's all these old dudes there, right? And they're all comics from like 50 years ago, and I don't know who the hell they are, you know? And it's not like famous comics like Milton Berle or anybody like that. It's these B-level comics from 50 years ago, you know? Like a Freddie Roman and dudes like that, right? So they're all playing poker, you know? They're all playing poker. And I'm playing poker, I just want to play poker, but they're all like making jokes, you know? And every joke they're making involves me being a gay dude. You know, you know what I mean? Like they'll go, ah, here you go, uh, kid, here's a, you know, be like a queen, I get a queen. They go, uh, here's a lady for the lady. Ah! And they'd all laugh, you know? And I didn't notice at first, I'm just playing cards, and all of a sudden I realized, Every joke is me being a, a homosexual man, right? So I'm not a homosexual man, as you well know. So, <laughs> He's definitely not. You're not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. But let me tell you something else. Uh. I would have sex with you while you were awake. <laughs> <laughs> for me. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah. Uh, this is my story. It's just, and then I'm playing, and then all of a sudden, this old dude next to me goes, ah, kid, just, uh, uh, you gotta, you gotta show them, uh, show them what you're made of. You insult them, too. You know, so I'm like, oh, so there's an old dude that's like 70 years old. So I go, hey, uh, uh there, old dude, you probably, uh, had a few guys. I've had sex with a few guys, right? And he goes, when you're writing, you learn a lot of that. I went to a guy who was a big writer guy who told me about things I didn't know about. Metaphors. You ever hear of them? What is this supposed to be? I'm trying to be said, you gotta use metaphors. I'm like, what's that? He's like, that's a thing. So metaphor is like you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. So I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? So he's like, <laughs> that means you can take a person, you know, and you can give them all the information and everything, but it, he still has to be the one to absorb it himself. So I was like, well, why the fuck didn't you just say that? Like, what? <laughs> why do you have to put a horse into it? Like, what? <laughs> You thought I was so stupid you needed to make it into some fable? Like what? <laughs> a horse? The nation is still reeling from Thursday's bombshell announcement that Lisa Marie Presley was filed for divorce from Michael Jackson. According to friends, the two were never a good match. She's more of a uh, stay-at-home type, and he's more of a homosexual pedophile. Jesus I'm going to go out of in an effort to raise money for his enormous okay. legal bills, O.J. Simpson this week began marketing a video which attempts to prove his innocence. 
Should the tape not sell, Simpson has a backup idea. His very own video of the actual murders themselves. So well, let's get to O.J. O.J. Simpson's lawyers say they don't want the families of Nicole Brown and Ronald Goldman in the courtroom during the trial. They're afraid the presence of the family members will just remind O.J. of how much more killing he still has to do. <laughs> That's so darn <laughs> According to a survey, 58% of men would have sex with a woman they disliked. Although, while having sex, they would really, really like them, and then afterwards, not like them again. <laughs> In a recent interview, Christy Brinkley suggested that football players should have special gloves connected to lights on their helmets. That way, when they catch the ball, you'll know who has possession. Read these and other interesting ideas in Christie's new book, <laughs> I'm an Idiot. <laughs> right! Because you know, you know, look at the field, you would know who has the ball. Well, in a Stupid. sworn deposition this week, O.J. Simpson claimed that he never, ever beat, choked, or hit his ex-wife with a closed or open fist. Luckily for O.J., lawyers forgot to ask if he'd ever cut her head off. <laughs> Well, in a recent interview, Christopher Reeve said that Robin That's Williams' comedy true. helped convince him to go on living. He then added that Polly Shore's comedy made him pray for the sweet release that death would bring. <laughs> <laughs> and the Pope came out with a book this week, which contains a series of essays examining faith and morality in today's secular world and the changing role of the Catholic Church as it approaches the 21st century. The book is entitled, God himself told me that O.J. is guilty. Yeah. <laughs> King of Pop, Michael Jackson, who collapsed during rehearsals for a concert last week, has been released from the hospital. Doctors say his condition is stable and continues to improve, although he is still a freak. Although he's still a freak. Well, O.J. Simpson's lawyers stopped feuding this week, finally. The Dream Team, F. Lee Bailey and Robert Shapiro, were able to put aside their differences and express their admiration for each other after O.J. threatened to cut their heads off. In an interview out this week, Demi Moore says she would like to have another baby, this time a boy to go along with her three daughters and two huge breasts. <laughs> they look fake, I'm not gonna lie. They look like While performing in New York this week to a packed audience, Yoko Ono shocked the crowd by tearing up a Bible. Most shocking of all, Yoko Ono performed to a packed audience. <laughs> well, according to published reports, Michael Jackson's wife is now pregnant with the pop star's second child. Asked why he decided to become a father again so soon, Jackson explained that his seven-month-old son is starting to lose his looks. <laughs> and in Boise, the Idaho State Medical Board has censured Dr. LeVar Withers after dozens of women alleged that he fondled them while their legs were up in stirrups. An angry Dr. Withers replied, "Hey." If I'm such a monster, why didn't they just go to another dentist? <laughs> yeah. Three years ago, an 11-year-old British schoolgirl put a message in a bottle and tossed it into the Atlantic Ocean. Well, this week, she was astounded to receive a reply from halfway around the world. Sadly, the reply read, You're 11? What are you wearing? <laughs> On what? Friday, the Jews <coughs> officially endorsed Bill Clinton for president, adding, adding, quote, I'd like to help him any way I can. To which the president replied, well, there is one thing. <laughs> 20th Century Fox right. has announced that Macaulay Culkin will not be hired to star in Home Alone 3. Studio spokesman said that it was nothing personal, but with Culkin now 16 years of age, the only way to keep him in the film would be to make the character retarded. 
Well, there may be trouble in paradise. Lisa Marie Presley confirmed this week that she and Michael Jackson live in separate residences 50 miles away from each other. Lisa Marie was quoted as saying, I guess being married to a homosexual pedophile wasn't such a great idea after all. <laughs> Yeah, that's the same how all of these, like, pop stars... In an effort to feel people. smarter than somebody, Dan Quayle this week spoke to 4,000 Amway employees. <laughs> For the president, you know, he can't jog now, and uh, he needs help getting around, and he still, you know, he still uh, occasionally suffers great pain, you know. Uh, on the upside, you got your medical marijuana, so that's, uh, you know... You must inhale, sir. It's the only way you're going to get better. You want to hear my dad's yeah. favorite joke? Yeah. He says uh, he was from the farm, you know, and he says uh, uh, a guy uh, a guy comes from the city. A city slicker comes and he buys a, uh, a farm, and the farmer next door comes over to him and says, "Hey, now, uh, would you like to come over to my house tonight? We're going to have a." A big shindig for you, uh, because, you know, we're neighborly here. And the city guys say, well, this is something that's I really like, you know, that this is why I moved to the farm to have things like this, you know. Guy says it'll be a hell of a big party, you know. He goes, it'll be, you know, a little a little uh, drinking, a little fighting, a little fucking, you know. And the guy, city guy goes, well, that sounds good. What time should I be here? And the, and the farmer goes, any time you like, just the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> so they would drink. Then get in a fight. <laughs> and fuck. <laughs> what? That could be real. Your dad's favorite that joke. That was my dad's favorite joke. <laughs> oh, that's so Charles bad. Woodson. How about that? Oh, what a season he had. <laughs> Great, man. He, he became the first defensive player to win the Heisman Trophy. And congratulations, Charles. That is something that no one can ever take away from you. Unless you kill your wife and a waiter, in which case... <laughs> all bets are out. <laughs> uh, I uh, came here uh, from Las Vegas, uh, Nevada, and when I was on the air, uh, uh, where do airplanes go from? Airports. What the fuck you just said? I was in the air Vegas, uh, Nevada, and when I was on the air, uh, uh, where do airplanes go from? Airports. <laughs> oh, I was in the thanks. airport, and guy, guys were asking, my, everybody wanted my ID, and it occurred to me that ID is a strange abbreviation, because I is short for I, and then D is short for dentification. So... <laughs> Seems to me D is doing most of the <laughs> leg work on that one. Something people don't know about you. I'm a deeply closeted gay guy. <laughs> well, I'm not coming out, though. Wait a minute. What are you revealing here today? I'm, I'm not revealing anything. I'm saying I'm deeply closeted. Well, that means you're gay. Well, I wouldn't say that. Why would I say that? I'm deeply closeted. No, but I, that means you're very, very gay, but you don't want to come out. You're so closeted. That I refuse to say I'm gay. Right. Exactly. But that, doesn't that mean you're gay? Hey, 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 easy, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> There's this movie coming out. Yes. Title undetermined at this point. Chairman of the board. Oh. All right. Do something with that, you freak. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet the board is spelled B O R E D. <laughs> ah, but I quit smoking. That's good for your teeth, man. You ever try that? Holy cow, is that tough, huh? I smoked ever since I was a kid. I always remember smoking, you know? One time I remember as a little kid, I was like eight years old, and I was behind my garage. I was sneaking a cigarette back there, and my dad caught me. I'll never forget it. His big head came around the corner of the garage. There was my dad's big head. And then his body, right after it. There was his body. Trailing his head as it often would. And he grabbed me, and he hauled me in. And I thought I was in for the strapping of my life, you know? What he did is he pulled out his giant cigar. Must have been half the size of my arm, this big cigar. 
stuck it in my mouth, lit it up, made me smoke it all the way through, right to the end. That's when I started smoking cigars real heavy. <laughs> that plan backfired on him. That's right. Then there was another time I remember, now that I'm thinking about it, I was behind the garage again, as luck would have it. And uh, this time I was smoking a big fat joint back there. And uh, don't do drugs. <laughs> and uh, my dad's big head showed up again. And it's, there's no body this time, just a big head. That was the funny part. You like to mix it up like that, you know? Like to mix it up. So anyways, he grabbed me there with his teeth and he hauled me in. And uh, I thought I was in for the strapping of my life, you know, but uh, injected me with heroin. What? So he, was, he was a strict man, I'll tell you that. <laughs> right. But you gotta quit smoking, that's all I know, man. You gotta quit smoking. It's not all I know, I know other things too, but uh, it'd be a kind of a wasted life if that's all I combed out of it there. But, <laughs> but uh, you gotta quit smoking, because otherwise you get old and then unhealthy, you know? You see a lot of that, you know? Oh, some guys don't. You ever see those old guys? Doesn't matter what the hell they do to themselves, they just grow old anyway, you know? Meet a guy, be the oldest bastard you ever met, you know? Just does everything wrong, you know? Every day, I smoke four packs of cigarettes. I drink a bottle of Jack Daniels and I hit myself in the head with a shovel every goddamn day. <laughs> I'd like to die. I'd like to die? God, I'd love to die. I... <laughs> One time I put a shotgun in my mouth and what? blew the whole goddamn back of my head out there. <laughs> Just a slight ringing in the ears. <laughs> Yeah, I met in, in the airport. I met uh, Matlock. Oh, uh, Matlock is uh, Andy Griffin. Yeah, Andy he used to call himself Andy Griffin. Now he goes by Ben Matlock. <laughs> he really calls himself Ben Matlock. But uh, so uh, yeah, I went into the airport and he was in there. And you know the bookstores they have in the, in, in, in the oh, airport. Yeah, yeah, sure. So he's in there. He's reading a big one of the big thick mm. books. You know, mm -hmm. smart guy. You know. Mm -hmm. So I'm standing over there. I'm, I look, I'm leafing through a Jughead comic. I see him over there. <laughs> so I think to myself, I say, hey, I'm going to sidle up beside uh, old Ben Matlock. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to grab one of them big books myself. He doesn't have to know nothing. Sure. Pretty soon we get in a conversation. Mm -hmm. We start talking. And, uh, and I, I find out uh, how he ever solved that case where Claude, uh, Claude Aikens killed. You remember, anyways, whatever. <laughs> I wanted to talk to him. Right. Uh -huh. So uh, take 10 minutes, I'm talking to him, I'm talking to him, he's very friendly, very outgoing and everything like that. And uh, it was really nice. And all of a sudden I realized it wasn't Ben Matlock at all. Really? Who <laughs> were? It's not Andy Griffith? No, just some old man. And uh, <laughs> now, don't you think that this guy has a, a moral, you know, a responsibility to tell people instantly that he's not Matlock. <laughs> I don't know. That's, that's a good question. I never thought of that. That's funny. You know what else I like about the magic phone? Wikipedia. Oh, you ever use that? That's the best, man. It makes a democracy out of smartness. Everybody's equal now. You know, used to be a guy I'd go to school five, six that's years, true. and then he'd talk to me, and I'd be like, ah. But now. Now it's all different. I got my magic phone in my pocket. So a guy will say to me, he'll go, Hey, Norm, you ever hear of a fella that went by the name of Claude Monet? And I go, Why, of course I have. I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and I go to the bathroom. And I'm in there 20, 25 minutes, and I come back. I go, hey, uh, listen, uh, I was just, uh, we were talking about Claude Monet, and I just wanted to say that, you know what I liked about him was uh, his paintings. <laughs> I liked the way he painted. He was a painter, and I loved how he used the paint to make paintings. Right. And the guy goes, God damn, Norm, I've never been able to stump you in two years. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Uh, you're very kind. You know, in the, uh, what's that? Oh, yeah, I know. 
No, you're absolutely right. That is my name. You know, when the people, when the people here ask me to do the show, you know, I gotta say, Shoot, I go. felt kind of weird, you know. I, I don't... Sorry about that. Come on, play it. I don't know if you remember this, but uh, I used to actually be on this show, you know. <laughs> Uh, I used to do the uh, weekend update news routine. You remember that? And uh, yeah. Yeah. that's where I did the make-believe news jokes. You know, that was me, right? So then, a year and a half ago, right? I had a sort of a, a disagreement with the management at uh, at the NBC. Uh, I wanted to keep my job. Right? <laughs> And they felt the exact opposite. <laughs> so, so you see, they like uh, they fired me because they said that I wasn't funny. You know, now what? now with most jobs, I could have had a hell of a lawsuit on my hands for that. But but see, this is a comedy show. <laughs> so they got me. You know, you know, what? <laughs> you know. What? But now this is the weird part, right? It's only a year and a half later, and now. They asked me to host the show. So I wondered, I go, hey, wait a second here. Hey! I go, how did I go in a year and a half from being not funny enough to be even allowed in the building to being so funny that I'm now hosting the show? How did I suddenly get so damn funny? <laughs> That's he is it was man. inexplicable to me because a year and a half, let's face it, is not enough time for a dude to learn how to be funny. <laughs> then it occurred to me, I haven't gotten funnier. The show has gotten really bad. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I'm funny compared to, you know, well, you'll see later, but... <laughs> yeah, he's dissing the other ones. Oh okay, so let's recap. The bad news is, I'm still not funny. The good news is, the show blows. All right, folks, we got a bad show for you tonight. Dr. Dre, Snoop Doggy Dog, and Eminem are here. We'll be right back. Who are safer drivers, men or women? I've well, according to a new survey, 55% of adults feel that women are most responsible for minor fender benders, while 78% blame men for most fatal crashes. Please note that the percentages in these pie graphs do not add up to 100% because the math was done by a woman. For those of you hissing at that joke, it should be noted that that joke was written by a woman. So, now you don't know what the hell to do, do you? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We don't hire women. Tell <laughs> oh, man. Yo, rest in peace, Norm. Rest in peace, man. Yo, it's like, you know, it's so funny how, like, I, I am started to discover all these great uh comedians but i discovered them way later like i remember when i had reacted to patrice o'neill and i really thought he was just hilarious but then when he got to the comments saying that oh man same that he had passed away i'm like what like how am i how am i discovering all these uh comedians now when they have passed like i wish i, I wish i was like i was aware of who they were while while they were here with us but man that was hilarious man i'm i'm like I, i'm i'm battling my cough along with battling my my uh sleep just to try to like <laughs> just try to stay up but like me just laughing i'm just you know just blown away but a lot of a lot of communities always like to to turn towards norm as like one of the greatest which i can tell like he is one of the greatest comedians on i can i can definitely battle with him with Bernie Mac, um, O'Neill was very funny. I'm not gonna hold you, but yeah, uh, with um, Amy Murphy, he's also um, um, he's he's also one of the he is considered to be one of the greats, especially when he 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 did a Raw special, which I haven't which I haven't seen Raw in a long time actually. 
Um, yeah, so anyways, if you guys really enjoyed this reaction today, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and share. Let me know in the comment section down below what you should react to next. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, my name is Nova, and I'll see you guys next episode. Peace!